So the project, the milestone one is up. Your task for this semester is to write a valet parking application. Uh, what it does is um, uh, the overall story is that you're going to have an application that comes up with a menu. And in that menu, it's going to tell you uh, uh, what you want to do. You want to park a car. You want to return a car. Uh, list the parking, um, close for the day, and things like that. So um, essentially what it does, if uh, you want to park the car, if you want to park the vehicle, it's going to ask you what, it, what is it you want to park. Is it a motorcycle or it's a, a car? And uh, when you ask, if, based on the information that you're giving, if it's a car, it's going to get the specifications for a car and assign a parking spot for it and put it in there. and um, Later on, you can come in a day and you can get your car out by giving your license plate number uh, or the parking spot number, whatever it is. So it gives you the parking spot number. You go and they bring up or bring your car and car gets out. So <clears throat> that's what the parking application does. Um, you can close down the application and it would remember everything, which means when you close the application and end the program of the, par uh, the, the parking application, when you end the program, uh, it will save all the information in the file, and the next one, next time you load the program, it loads the information from the file. So uh, it is a stateful application. It's not stateless. It remembers what it does, unless you close down the parking. If you close down the parking, this is a day parking. It's not a night parking. So if your, park, if your car stays over there after 8 o'clock, the cars are towed out. So end of day, they can have an end of day, and at an end of day, it lists all the cars that are supposed to be towed out, and the cars that are still in a parking are going to be towed out, and that's the end of day. To do all these things, what we do, what you're going to do is to start uh, with creating the user interface, which is essentially, first you're going to create a menu system, and after the menu system, you're going to create a mock-up application. What is a mock-up application? A mock-up application is essentially an application that looks like the end result. It looks like you have completed the application, but it doesn't do anything. Like, you know, if they want to make a car first, they make a car out of uh, uh, clay. They test it in one twin term. It looks like a car, but it's not a car. It's just a mock-up. It's a prototype. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. So step number one, what you need to do is to create the menu system for it, and it tells you exactly how it's supposed to be done. Uh, the project, how it goes through, it has uh, several due dates. You have milestone one, two, three, four, uh, and then you have a milestone five. As, as you see, milestones one to four each have 10%. Milestone five has 60% of the mark. Milestones one, two, three, and four, they don't have a hard due date. So we give you a due date. If you don't want to be late, stick to the due dates. But if you are even a week late, you're not going to lose any mark. So if it's due on November 8th, you can still submit it up to November 15 with no uh, loss of mark. But be careful. Uh, why? Because uh, the uh, because the, uh, if you're late in one, then you, the, the work's going to pile up. Okay, be careful about it and try to be on time. So, uh, so those milestones are um, make sure that you're not going to procrastinate. Okay? And each milestone does tests that we don't need to do at the end. So all the foolproofing stuff, all the things that you have to do, like how your menu system is going to work, everything is going to be tested in one milestone. So when the first four milestones are done, then the testing of the final application is not going to be that difficult. Okay? So uh, milestone one, you are creating a menu. Milestone two, you are creating the mock-up application, which is essentially as if the application is working. I'll show it to you. So, for, for milestone two, you're going to have something like this. So milestone one only tests milestone one only tests a menu system. So when you actually run the program, what you see as the result is uh, 
a program running testing the menu system, as you see. So it says uh, uh, the test one menu it one. Oh. So M1T wants to checks the constructors to see everything's okay. Checks the operator. Uh, left shift operator to see if you, it adds modules with that one. So it goes through the thing and then tests the running. Uh, uh, each object over here most likely has a function called run that actually runs that uh, uh, class. Menu has a run. Run of menu shows the, let me just bring it because it's, it's not in the screen. I'm going to bring it over here so it's visible. There you go. So it's going to tell you do the following. So essentially, this is the menu. This is the type. Temp is the title of the menu. One, two, three is the menu that is displayed. And then you, uh, uh, so it, you test it. I go over here, A, B, C, and you hit enter. It's going to say invalid integer because you're supposed to select a, a menu. Now I'm going to press four. Now it's going to say invalid selection. I'm going to press three as uh, zero invalid selection. I'm going to press three. Now it's going to say three selected. So it, it actually menu, it creates a foolproof menu. Uh, and uh, you can reset the menu title and change the menu title if you want to. And it, it tests all those things. And uh, then it checks for the submenu. So uh, if I press 2, it's uh, 2. But if I s press 3, then there's going to be a submenu that is intended to write. So it's going to be submenu number 1. Now I'm going to press 2. Again, another submenu. So it shows another submenu. As you see, every submenu is an indented four characters to write. So it actually shows that uh, the submenu is selected. And then you can select whatever you want over there. So now in here, I'm going to press 3. So it's going to say 3 was selected. Now I'm going to press 5, and it exits. So it tests the menu. You pass this milestone, then I don't need to test the menu in detail in milestone 6 anymore. So that's why every single milestone must be submitted, even if it's extra late and you get 0 in it. So even if you're three weeks late for a, for a milestone, you have to submit it for your project to be submittable. Okay, That's why the rejection dates of all milestones are December 14th, the last day that you can submit your. That's the rejection. But if you are even one week late, you get the full mark for it, which is 10%. Okay? And milestone two is a mock-up of the system, essentially, when you run milestone two, it looks like that the system is written, but it doesn't really do anything. It just displays how the system's supposed to work. So our uh, uh, it's not Seneca Valley parking; it's valet parking. So, but anyway, but anyways, so let me just fix that right now. <clears throat> There you go. Yeah, so program runs as follows. So as you see, you can park. So those are the tests that are doing for milestone two. But this is essentially what your final, pro, final outcome of your application milestone five is going to look like. So you're going to have park vehicle, return vehicle, list park vehicles, find vehicle. So you give a license plate. It tells you which parking spot it's parked on. Close the parking, which means closes the parking and throws all the cars out. Exit program just exits the program. When you come back in, you're in the last state that you were in. Using this menu is not going to perform any action. If I select one, it's simply, oh. It's park vehicle, so it shows the sub menu what you want to park. I'm going to say two motorcycle. It's just going to print a message. It says parking motorcycle. That's it. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to print a message that what was selected. That's it. 
in milestone three and four, you are going to write the engine, the guts of the application that this needs to be able to actually do these functionalities, do these stuff. In milestone five, you are going to actually put those engines, those activities into milestone two. So the milestone two that you created and you have a mock-up of the system, you get that mock-up of yours, you simply, instead of printing this message, you put the functionality in it and it works perfectly in it. All right. Uh, that's that. Um, I'm going to pause. Yeah, so, so yeah, so that's what you're going to do. Um, this is how actually applications are made. When you are going to a client, a client asks you to write an application. What you do, you create a mock-up thing, a uh, make-believe type of an application, and you show to the client. The client looks at the application and says, this is good, yes, I want it like this, no, change that. But you are not really writing the application. You are just writing the user interface that it looks like the application. Behind the scene, nothing happens. This is called prototyping. You are creating a prototype of the application. It's not the real application. It's just a mock-up. But later in next milestones, you simply take your functionalities that you have designed, the uh, um, actual parking a motorcycle procedure that is created, and you just insert it in a function. So all the functions that these are calling, the inside of the functions, they're just printouts. You're just, you're just printing something, all right? And that's your milestone number two. For milestone number three and four, you're going to actually start creating the, the classes and going through every single thing, how it's supposed to be done. So three and four, the engine is built. And milestone five is the one that you are going to actually uh, write the whole system and, uh, uh, and demonstrate it. To make that fair, every functionality, this, you have six, uh, you have six stages in your menu. There are six things in your program. One is loading and saving the file. The other one is uh, parking a vehicle. Another one is returning a vehicle, then finding a vehicle, closing the parking. So these are six things that your application is supposed to do. Those six stages will be tested separately, and for each you get 10%. So for your project to be submittable, <laughs> and gain mark, and you don't fail the subject. You don't get an incomplete. You actually get your mark. You need to submit the four, first four milestones, and your milestone five should at least do one of these. Then you get 50%, because you have 40% of the four milestones and 10% of this one, that's 50%. The second functionality works, becomes 60%. And if all of them work, you get 100%. Okay, so depending on what you're doing and uh, how far did you go to the, to, with the application, uh, that's how you're going to get more. Okay, so that's how Milestone 5 is submitted through six different submissions, and each one is going to be a simple one. So you don't have to go through a, a lengthy submission for everything. Just for, for example, for loading and saving, you don't even have any data entry. You just run the application and save the application and I'm going to test to see if you actually loaded this stuff and saved it properly or not. So things like that is going to be said. Uh, another thing that you need to realize and you need to understand that this is like a real-time application development that you're doing outside, which means in Milestone 4, I might ask you to go add something to Milestone 1. So it's a dynamic thing. We're going to go through it, and on Milestone 4, we'll see, oh, oops, we have got to this point, but for this thing to work, I have to make sure that this is changed in milestone two, or this is changed in milestone. So those things may happen. So you will, you're going to see those things. So I'm going to say at this stage, at, and essentially that's what milestone five is. In milestone five, you are changing milestone two and make it functional. Okay? So one more time. Milestone one is the menu. Milestone two is the mock-up application that looks like a running thing, but it doesn't do anything. Milestone three, you are creating a vehicle. Milestone four, you are creating a motorcycle and a car. Milestone five, 
you make all these things to get parked in parking spots. OK? And you uh, uh, put the functionalities uh, in Milestone 2 and make Milestone 2 work. So one of the most important things that students should do and they never do, you do not read. The fact that six, seven of you didn't do half of the part three of the test because you didn't know there were two questions over there is a proof. I had bold highlighted over there. This one has two parts. Do this and you just did the first part because you do not read. You have to read all the things that you see at the beginning before you do anything. So your first task is to go through everything in here and see how the project's supposed to be done. Don't jump to milestone. Don't just, people come over here and right at the beginning they just click on milestone one and start doing it. Don't do that. Go actually see what is supposed to be done and do it properly, okay? So read all these things, understand what citations are and everything, go through compiling procedures, see what they are and how you're supposed to do all those things. And project implementation, no, very important, read carefully, which means half of you won't read it, but read it. These are stuff that essentially re rejects the submission of your application, you should read them, okay? Things like, uh, uh, what is the namespace you're supposed to write these things in and what methods you can use and uh, Like for example when I say read what does it mean like all the reads have to follow certain signatures? So you have to go through that and then the project begins over here. Okay, so what it does I explained exactly what the first one does. It's essentially a menu um, Module one that you are creating the menu module it actually has two classes in it not one class one class is called menu item. The other class is called a menu. <clears throat> menu item is a class that is fully private. It doesn't have anything public in it. Even the constructor is private in it. So when you do something like that, if a constructor is private, how you create the object? It's impossible, correct? You can't do that. The reason it's designed to show you what friendship is actually for. So menu item is owned by menu. So menu is the owner of menu item. Hence, menu is a friend of menu item. And the only process who can actually instantiate menu item is menu. So inside menu item, you're going to have friend, class, menu. So the menu becomes the owner of menu item, therefore nothing can instantiate a menu item other than a menu. Are we clear on this? And because of this fact that one class owns the other, these two classes are in the same module. So this module, menu module, is not only menu, it's menu item and menu. Two classes are in one module. Are we good at this? Okay. Yes. One more time. Do you think this is a good design for a class to be friend with another class? That's the only reason you have friendship. Friendship for methods and functions are wrong. If you have a method that is a friend of a class, it means your design is flawed. Because a friend has no re a, a method has no reason to become a friend. You can always have an accessor function and use the accessor function in the helper function and you don't need to make it a friend. The only reason you need friendship is to implement ownership. Got it? All right, so if I have a class head and I have a class human being, you cannot have a head standing by itself. A head comes with a human being, right? Therefore, a human is a class that owns a head. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? So essentially, a human is a friend of its head. Got it? Okay, it's the same thing over here. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the only reason you can have friends. Okay? And the construction of menu item, what it is, I removed all dynamic memory stuff from the menu to make sure that you only 
concentrate on the, the friendship and creating the thing. So the maximum length of all the C strings over here is 50 characters, which means you have to do 51 <clears throat> to make sure that you have one for null. So set all those things. You have certain member functions that you need to uh, create. Um, the copy uh, rule of three for it, okay? Although this class doesn't have any resources outside of it. Menu doesn't have any resources. Therefore, it doesn't need copy constructor or an assignment operator. But we don't want anybody to be able to copy it. Therefore, you need to delete <coughs> copy and assignment. I'll demonstrate today. So what you need to do, you need to write the prototype for copy constructor and the prototype for assignment operator in the class and write equal to delete in front of it, which means you are saying Nobody is allowed to copy this object. If somebody wants to copy a menu, compiler will give you an error. Okay? So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do. So menu item cannot get copied or assigned to another menu item. This must be enforced in your code, which means if you have a class menu item, in your class menu item, you need to have something like a menu item, a const menu item reference. You don't need to put any name because you don't want to write a function. You just write over here, delete. And that means <clears throat> this class cannot be copied. You are restricting, you are enforcing it not to be copied. And the same thing for the assignment operator. So you go void operator equal. <clears throat> const menu item reference, and you say equal to delete. And that forces, uh, enforces the fact that menu item is not supposed to be assigned to another menu item. That will prevent it. And if you try to do so, it's going to give you an error. So if you actually have a menu item a and B, if you write A is equal to B, if you actually do something like this, it's going to say it's a deleted thing. It's not going to allow you to do it. <coughs> um, and as we discussed before, if you, this, is, this has nothing to do with the project, but the reason that it's giving an error over here, because I created the constructor, it needs a default constructor. Okay? And if you want the, you know that if I didn't have anything in here, I wouldn't get any uh, errors over there because the default constructor would be created, right? So if you still want the system to actually have the default constructor for you, you should do this. So you have to actually say, hey, uh, although I created the default, the constructors, you still create your own default constructor. You can do that. By doing something like that, uh, it's going to create the automatic default constructor that it does if you didn't have any. Anyways, as you see now in, in, uh, under the assignment operator, I have an error, which means you cannot assign this object to another. So if you actually take a look at it, it's going to say member operator equal is a deleted function. You cannot do that. Or if I did something like this, I would have the exact same problem saying, hey, what are you doing? You cannot uh, do a copy because uh, the copy construction is deleted. Anyways, so that's that. All right. And um, <clears throat> A member question can display itself by writing its, its content on a screen and, and printing a, a new line. So that's what it does. If a menu item is in an empty state, nothing is printed. That's it. So that's what you need to have as a member function. Now, what is the signature of print? Go read the place at the top that I said you're not going to read. It explains over there that any moment if we ask an object is supposed to print or read itself, what is the signature? You have it at the top. Go read it and you'll find out. Okay? Other member functions, anything you find necessary, please add to it. It's open-ended. You can add anything you want to it. As long as you have what I need, you can add anything else you want to. 
But if you are creating a member function for any of the classes, and this member function is only used by the class itself or its owner, make sure you make it private. Okay? So if you are creating mem fun member functions that you are using and it's not used outside, and you are just using it to make your own life easier, just make it private. That's the proper thing to do. So the menu class, maximum number of items that is set to 10. So we can have a menu only uh, with 10. Again, no dynamic memory allocation over here. A menu has an array of 10 menu items. And it has an integer in there that tells how many of these things are set. And every single time, uh, so you can create a menu by giving its title. Tell what is the title of the menu, and tell if this menu is supposed to be indented to right. So it, has, it accepts an integer that what is the number of indentation in this menu. So if that indentation is one, then each thing that you are printing in menu should uh, be uh, um, started by four spaces in front of it if it's one. If the indentation is two, then it should be eight spaces, Okay, as you saw when we executed it. So that's how it gets created. And uh, indentation is explained. So an um, example of the menu without indentation is as follows. The one that has two indentation, as you see, it has eight spaces before. So anything that gets printed, you put indentation. You can add other properties if you want. Construction happens with uh, uh, a C string and the uh, uh, indentation. If indentation is not provided, it will be zero by default. Copy assignment, copy and assignment are deleted. You, can, uh, you have to make sure that nobody can copy a menu. You have to cast uh, uh, being converted to Boolean to return if this thing is in a, a valid state or not, the menu. Is empty is exactly like Boolean cast, but in opposite way. So if Boolean cast is returning true, is empty is returning false, OK? <clears throat> you display the function. What it does, it displays the title, obviously adding the indentation if needed. It displays the title and displays all the menu items with the indentation needed. Uh, if it is invalid, it's going to say invalid menu. If it has uh, no menu items, it's going to say no menu items to display. So essentially, first you print the title. Then you start putting a row number and show the menu items one by one. And you add an exit at the end. OK, does it have an exit? Uh, let me see over here. No, actually, you don't need. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. So uh, display row number, yada, yada, yada. Afterwards, a space, menu item array. It will continue printing row numbers and menu items. At the end, it will print greater than, yeah. So, you, so this one has one, two, three, four, five menu items. So this exit is one of the menu items. And then after everything is printed, it shows a greater than sign and places the cursor one space after. So the cursor will be spaced right after this blue thing over here, waiting for entry. Obviously, menu is not, at, this is just to display. So we are not doing anything. So assignment to a character string changes the title of the menu. So if it was launch menu, then you say launch menu is equal to new title. It becomes a new title. OK? Add function adds to the adds a, <clears throat> a C string. First, it creates a menu item and assigns uh, the next available menu item inside the menu to the menu item to the value of the C strings that is coming in. How you implement it is your choice. OK? So essentially, uh, the, it receives a, a C string and makes that the next menu item inside the menu. <clears throat> Left shift, over, left shift overload does the exact same thing, but with cascading effect. With add, you can add only one. If you want three menu items, you have to call three adds. But with left shift operator overloaded, you can say launch menu, hamburger, chicken sandwich, pasta, meatball. So essentially, it adds three menu items 
to the launch menu. Okay? <clears throat> and the displaying of that will actually look like this. Okay? And if, if any of these menu items are an invalid one, the whole thing is rendered invalid. Remember that. So as you see, I'm, entering, I'm adding a null PTR and then two different things. It's an invalid menu. <clears throat> so the run function of menu displays the, the, the menu and then gets a validated integer. You saw it. I executed it. So if uh, uh, a menu has three items, it accepts from one to three and makes sure it's an integer and it's a valid thing. It doesn't accept anything else. And if it doesn't go through, you show the messages. The messages are displayed over here. So it tells you exactly what happens. If, <clears throat> if, if uh, the value is incorrect, but it's an integer, you say int invalid integer, try again. If the value is not an integer and cannot be read. You simply say invalid selection. Try again. So a, a tester program for a simple tester for, program for a menu is something like this, this code snippet. So I can say launch menu. That is a launch menu. I add hamburger, chicken, and pasta. Then I'm going to say launch menu run. Choice is equal to that. So it runs the run, will display the launch menu, ask for the option of the user, returns their choice. Now I can say you selected whatever choice you have. OK? <clears throat> it would have been nice if I actually overloaded the index operator so it could actually show the content of what is being selected. But hopefully that's for next semester. <laughs> it would have been nice if I did. If we had actually, I could, <clears throat> it would have been nice if we could say over here you selected. Launch menu, uh, square, bra uh, square bracket, choice. So it actually shows what was selected. But that's, that's for another time. <clears throat> so the integer cast, if you cast a menu to an integer, it runs. So casting a menu to an integer or calling the run function will do the same thing. So instead of actually running, I can actually say int choice is equal to launch menu. Because the compiler tries to cast launch menu to an integer, it will call your cast overload, and therefore conversion overload, and therefore run will call. <clears throat> Date tester program? What the devil is that? OK. Date tester program. Uh, where is the? Because of all the rules that we have, I copy the content of the previous thing and fill in the blanks with the new project. The last thing, milestone one, was date. <laughs> so it says this one doesn't have any dates. So, so it's, it says date tester program. I have to edit this. <laughs> so let me do it right here. Where's the? Oh, I'm not logged in, am I? No, sorry. I'm seeing why it's not actually showing me the, the edit option. There you go. So, date tester, was it? Yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, MS1 tester program. <laughs> That's better. All right. <clears throat> so where were we? So the tester program essentially tests all the things that we just mentioned. And again, this is a, uh, this is a very simple program, right? Don't be uh, uh, kind of. Um, um, feel like, oh my God, I'm going to write something huge. It's not the case, okay? Everything's explained over there. Do it, follow the thing. It's not going to be difficult. You can finish it in, in, in five days max. Um, 
So uh, yeah, so just follow the instructions, do what it's done, and this, the tester program, uh, will test it, and you'll see exactly how it happens. Uh, and uh, the tester program, all the tester programs that, I have, that I'm writing is a blueprint for you how to do MS2. Remember that. Like when I'm showing you over here how to actually call a menu and run it and do whatever is needed, you can use all these logics to actually do MS2. Because MS2, you are using a menu to, the menu class you have written to create the mock-up app. And that's the end of uh, Milestone 1. Um, and this is the, the output of the tester program. And that's it. Submission and everything is there. You know it. Milestone 2 is going to be up soon. So in a week or two, all the milestones are going to come up. So I'm going to put everything up in like next 10 days. So all the milestones are going to come up. And you can just start working on it. The same rules apply. Um, let me pause over here because I'm talking to my class. I don't want to put this thing for everyone. OK, so that was the overview for, the, for, the, uh, for milestone one. I'm going to post it for all the students, OK? So let's stop the recording.